Aid groups say they are extremely worried about what they're calling the nightmare situation of civilians trapped in the fierce fighting in northern Sri Lanka. But a Sri Lankan ministry official has insisted that there's no humanitarian crisis. Now, the Sri Lankan ambassador to the UN, HMGS Palihakara, joins me now from New York. And Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us here in CNN today. And please tell us what is the Sri Lankan government doing to protect the civilians who are trapped in the fighting in northern Sri Lanka? Uh, first of all, the government is deeply concerned uh, about the plight of uh, these civilians. And in fact, for that reason, government has, with the assistance of the UN, appeal to the Tamil Tigers, the LTTE, to let these people move to safer areas. In fact, a few days ago, the government uh, was able, with the assistance of the UN, to ferry uh, 250 odd people uh, into safer areas. Uh, in addition, government has also declared a safe area into which uh, these uh, people uh, can go and uh, uh, armed forces are under explicit instructions and in fact they have confirmed that uh, even though LTT is firing from behind civilian lines they are not returning fire and in addition uh, uh, government plans to send in more uh, assistance food and medical supplies into these areas. I, I'm sorry more on that point are you saying that you will allow aid organizations to, to gain access to into the war zone to, to assist people there? Uh, actually, the aid organizations are there. ICRC is already there. Caritas is there. And the UN regularly uh, uh, gets windows of access working with the armed forces. In fact, uh, only a few days ago, the last convoy of supplies went in and uh, the armed forces and the agencies are working on the next window. Okay, you're saying that aid agencies like the ICRC are working in the war zone area. It was my understanding that uh, they had been barred from going to the conflict zone. But uh, moving on, journalists, I do know, are, are barred from entering the war zone to, to cover the facts on the ground. When is that situation going to change? Uh, first uh, point about uh, ICRC is there. I can confirm that. In fact, uh, ICRC has been reporting some unfortunate uh, incidents of uh, uh, shell fire and we are very thankful to them and the journalists are of course taken to areas when the security situation permits uh, in fact the BBC and uh, and uh, several other writers and other journalists were taken to the town of Mulatiu some uh, time ago in fact uh, day before yesterday uh, one news agency reported from the uh, frontline area I think it was Al Jazeera and uh, we uh, the um, our forces have don't have the practice of embedded uh, reporting because in that kind of counter-intelligency operations, I don't think they have the facility. But when, whenever the security situation permits, journalists are taken. Now, a, a hospital was shelled over the weekend, killing a number of civilians. Is there an investigation being conducted by the government to find out what happened? For example, we don't know who is responsible for the shelling. Could it be the Sri Lankan government, the Sri Lankan military? Uh, the military spokesman has categorically uh, stated that they know the coordinates of the hospital that they have not fired and uh, uh, fired even when fired upon by the LTTE. In fact, the respected Bishop of Jaffna had asked the LTTE to remove their heavy weapons from the safe areas and not to fire from that area. And uh, the, certainly there will be an investigation. And in fact, uh, uh, we hope that the uh, ICRC and others who are present there uh, will help uh, us in assisting in that investigation. Because journalists are still barred from going into northern Sri Lanka where the fighting is taking place, we have to rely on the work of NGOs or even uh, um, material provided by the Sri Lankan government to just get a sense of what's happening on the ground there. We've been airing video that's, uh, that was given to us by an NGO that's affiliated to the Tamil Tiger rebels of the civilian suffering there. This is, uh, uh, this is a footage from that video that was offered uh, to us from that organization. Uh, you have also put forward some photos that, that you say also documents what's happening on the ground. Can, can you uh, walk us through the images that you want to share with us? 
Yes, uh, certainly the, the video you have shown, they are certainly disturbing uh, photography and in fact, uh, as your own correspondent mentioned, uh, these are dated videos. I, uh, it's not clear under what circumstances the uh, video has been produced. As you said, uh, it was produced by an organization called the Tamil Rehabilitation Organization. It is banned in several countries as a front organization for the LTTE. Uh, just yesterday, the Sri Lankan president said that uh, the army was on the verge of crushing the rebels after more than 20 years of war. So it seems that the rebels are, 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 are very weakened at this point. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts about when this conflict is going to end? I hope uh, sooner than later because the people, especially the Tamil people, have suffered immensely uh, under the, especially under the LTT uh, oppression uh, and uh, they are now confined into an area of about 300 uh, uh, square kilometers whereas earlier they were controlling around uh, 10 to 11,000 kilometers and uh, our forces have been able to clear this area without, uh, up to uh, recently, without any major uh, civilian uh, and other collateral damage compared to other theaters of conflict where counter -ins insurgency operations are on. So we, uh, we hope that this uh, activity will be over and the government will be able to launch into a political process.